Hello and welcome back to the coverage of the fourth and final day of the World Para Alpine Skiing World Cup Series here in Kutai in Austria. If you want to follow us, you can do. Use the app Para Alpine sign that's just gone through your screen there. You can follow us on Twitter, Instagram and Facebook. All the athletes, there you can see them at the top of the course getting ready to make their way down. A slightly warmer day here for the final day but the weather is just starting to change here on the Hohimut course the uh, snow is starting to come a little heavier than it has for most of the day the uh, visibility levels uh, I can't see to the top let's put it that way uh, the Hohimut course is some 2127 meters above sea level it's a vertical drop of 163 meters and the course itself 731 meters long So who will master these 52 gates that we have in front of us here in this very final session? We hope you enjoyed the coverage of this World Cup so far. Make sure you join us in Zagreb when we get there early part of next year, the 8th and 9th of the dates of competition. Visually impaired women's event coming first. We'll have the Alexandra Khanseva going first in that. The women's standing event has been dominated by Maria Borsche. Uh, so far, and uh, that hasn't changed as we head into the final session. Oma Kazazic, slowest time of the morning session. Uh, you see Bostri, 56.21. She has been dominant, uh, and quite frankly, if she goes through in uh, first in this standing event, she'll be hands down the athlete of the World Cup here in Katai quite easily. So we get started with uh, the women's VI, you've uh, just had Hanseva go through in a time of 2.13.54. Millie Knight making her way down. So uh, Hanseva sets the benchmark for the rest, 2.13.54. Millie Knight on course here, Elena Sana making a start at the top with her sister Chloe as the guide. This is Millie with Brett Wilde, uh, a guide from 2016. And through the line comes Knight, and that's a time of 2.10.50, so she's in front for now. So, uh, Sina will need something like a 106 to come close tonight. So she needs to match Millie Knight's second run. In fact, she needs a 108. So she's actually got two seconds to play with, should I say. So a 108 for Sina. And there you can just see the snow getting heavier towards the top. So the visibility for the guide, who in turn then has to take through the VI athlete, becomes impaired itself, but uh, a slightly wide penultimate gate as well is going to be interesting. Uh, 208.58. She does indeed go 105.78. So uh, Sana leads. Kelly Gallagher went 102.16 this morning, so she had just short of... Uh, Seven tenths of a second better off than Elena Sana. So she needs to go 105.78 to 106.3. Maybe 106.5 will get away with it to uh, keep the lead over Sana. You can see the clock ticking away, the uh, official time. We'll come through. Oh, Gallagher just struggling with that. Uh, it's actually the third from last. She just throws the poles over her shoulder. 207.91. She keeps the lead, but it could have been so much quicker. What you can't see is uh, it's actually obstructed by the, the inflatable arch over the finish line. It's the uh, third from last gate. He's quite wide, and they really have to get round that. 
and we're just blocked and I think Gallagher had a little trouble with it it's outside of my window so I'll keep a, a real eye on that gate as we go through the rest of this competition so uh, Noemi Iveristal of Germany is next Lucien Gerkau is the guide for the 26 year old and uh, through they come Oh, big celebrations from uh, Lucien and a, uh, a hug after the finish line, 158.97, some 8.8 .8 seconds clear of uh, Kelly Gallagher. And that gap was only two and a half seconds at the beginning of the run, so that shows you how well Noemi has done in her run in this second slalom competition. Mena Fitzpatrick has been predominantly podium based for this World Cup leg bringing joy to the Great Britain team and Fitzpatrick following those instructions of guy Jennifer Keogh into the bottom section here's the tricky bit they have to go wide over to their right hand side and then cut back in that could be interesting come the Sitski part of these events and certainly in the faster standing events as well here's our current leader but uh, she ends her run very early does uh, Melissa Perrin. So Henrietta Frakasova is next. This is uh, Farkasova, who was uh, dominant in the giant slalom, and uh, well, now that uh, Perrine is out of the running in this slalom second competition here this week. A chance for Fakasova to move up the slalom standings as well. Just following on from Natalia Subotova. They caught up with these two in the hotel the other day. They've got matching boots off the piste as well. And uh, Natalia, the guy, said they were the warmest boots she'd ever put on. 58.47 for the run. 155.37. And that, the official time, 155.37, wins it for Henrietta Joacasa, a third victory over these four days. So into the standing competition now, Ilma Kazazic, uh, DNF'd in both of the giant slalom events. She's happy that she finished both runs yesterday in the slalom contest and uh, the athlete from Bosnia and Herzegovina maneuvering her way down in an attempt to finish another double run day Zazic the slowest of the runs this morning 121.65. Big slide there from Kazazic. Two forty seventy nine is the combined time for Kazazic. 
This is uh, boob number 17 that belongs to Melanie Schwartz of the United States. Big uh, USA letters on the left thigh. One of our single leg skiers is Melanie Schwartz. A lady that uh, was actually born in Toronto. Representing the US here. And looking to find a finish inside that time set by Kazaz. It should be very obtainable for somebody of Schwartz's ability. And uh, she'll cross the line in 11.93 inside. Ilma Kazadzic, so a time of 2.28.86. Uh, next should have been Barbara Perez de Juan, but she's a, a non starter in Bib 21. So this is Elena Krata, Bib number 20, 21 year old, the physical therapist. In her day-to-day -day life, and Krata making quick work of the course so far. Then you just see the misty conditions due to the snow falling a little bit higher up. As she comes into this bottom section, crossing the line in a time of uh, two fifteen zero one altogether. So she's now our leader. Melania Corradini of Italy. And down goes Corradini, the 30 year old. Goes out of the competition here on the second run on this final day. That's quite innocuous, that. She just loses the right edge of the skis. And uh, once they go from underneath you, there's uh, nowhere else to go but down. So this is Erin Latimer of Canada. Latimer's time this morning, 106.60. To uh, overtake Krata. She needs to be inside 215 altogether. She's going to do that comfortably. It'll be around 213, in fact, 14 as she goes over 214.44. So all the fours at the end of that for Erin Latimer, who is the new leader and will stand in the leader's box for a couple of moments. Anna Jochumsen of the Netherlands next up. Jochumsen, another of our single leg skiers in this World Cup. Jochumsen doing okay as she approaches this bottom section. Oh, just clattered those poles a little bit too heavily. The sharp right before the home straight, and she's over the line in 2.08.56 is the actual official time. So Jochumsen will uh, sigh of relief at the bottom. We'll move on to Rothfuss of Germany. 28 year old. She uses the left arm quite high up. Oh, the slip here from Rothfuss. And one of the big names in this is out. 103.30. Rothfuss goes out. 
Petra Smazova, the uh, lady with the pink helmet, who uh, represents Slovakia. Only four more athletes to come after Smazova. So if she sets a good time, she needs 208.55 to take the lead as a minimum. And she's moving really well. This is the area that we lost Rothfuss just a moment ago. No problems for Smazova into the final few gates. This, that's the sharp right-hand turn they have to make towards the end. It really slows them down, but uh, not so much for Smazova. 2.05. 0-1. So uh, Petra Smazova has the lead. She's uh, wandered away from the winner's area. The leader box is where the athletes are meant to stand in case they need to be interviewed. But uh, Smazova just moving herself away. Maria Papulova. First run was 101.08. But pull of that is the hard part. Again, you just see the arms flailing to the side to try and control that turn. And she's done it well. 202.34. So another new leader. These times are getting quicker and quicker. 202.34 from Papulova. This is Anna Maria Rida. Who is next? With only Marie Boschet to come. Rida needs to set a quick time here. Seventeen year old who is having a tremendous time here at this World Champs in terms of performances. Third at the World Championships in the slalom earlier in the year. Anna Maria Rida. Here comes the tough right into the left. Back through the final two gates. Great time. She's inside by 1.93. Two minutes, 0 0.40. So we've got uh, Marie Boucher. This is Boschet. Three victories out of three races so far here in Kutai. He's to come inside two minutes. And she's flying, is Boschet. And that's brilliant. 6.79 seconds clear of everybody else. 153.61. And Marie Boschet becomes the first athlete to win all four races here at this World Cup in Austria. So uh, you can see the, uh, in the background a moment ago, the winners of the visually impaired contest uh, for Kassava and Subatova. But uh, they won three out of four. But uh, Marie Boschet certainly dominating the women's standing section at the moment. There's the Kutai Cow. And here's well, was the start list for the sitting event. Ruth Haxbiel will go first. Linda Van Impelen. Heike Eder. Claudia Lelsch. Anna Schaffelhuber. And Annalena Forster. Well, Loesch had a great start in the giant slalom, winning both days of that contest. The 29-year-old made a mistake in the first run yesterday of the first slalom event, and she crossed the line after the first run here this morning with a, a large shake of the head. Don't forget, if you want to get in touch with us, use the hashtag ParaAlpine. You can follow us using that as well on Facebook, on Twitter, Instagram, maybe even catch up with our Snapchat stories. If only I knew what that meant. Ruth Hagsbill getting herself ready at the top. Went 112.76 this morning with only six 
sitting athletes left in the competition, first and foremost, just make it to the bottom because you absolutely never know. We've seen some uh, big names on mono skis really struggle here in Kutai. Take a look at the men's event, the world champion Jeroen Kamstra, who only this morning managed his first run down without hiccup. So uh, Hagspiel's first challenge is to get to the bottom unscathed and we'll worry about the times a little bit later. But Hagspiel moving down the mountain as her quest for a podium finish starts to move on. 26-year-old student from Germany. Was a keen free skier before an accident in uh, 2009. And, uh, here, chasing one of these podium places and more important points in the World Cup, of course. Just about sliding away through that turn. Not into the bottom section just yet. Up over the brow of the hill she comes then. So visible now to the spectators at the bottom of the hill. Haxpiel just really having to grind that singular ski into each and every corner. This is the tough right to left. This will be interesting to see how these mono skis cope. And she's come out of it unscathed through the last two she comes. And Haxpiel sets the first time, 2.19.51. 26-year-old gives everybody else something to aim at. Linda van Imperlin, number 31 on the bib, comes out next. And that van Imperlin is followed out by Heike Eder. And this is the uh, lady from Austria. Who, uh, Eder who did a run of 104.64. Was uh, in the mix for medals uh, positions yesterday. Had a big slide out. And, uh, she starts to enter the slower, flatter part of the course before they enter that final drop down towards home. Just about keeping momentum here as it goes over the brow of that final hill. Just getting caught up in one of the poles momentarily there. And this is Eda. It looks as if Van Impelen is a uh, DNF somewhere out there on the course. She hasn't come by my window. But uh, Heike Eda does without too many real difficulties. 2 10 0 4. She's now the leader with only four to come. So an accident here. Or a mistake made by any of these final three. And uh, Heike Eda will make her way onto the winner's podium a little bit later on. Here's a lady we don't expect to make mistakes. This is Claudia Loesch, 26-year-old. 29-year-old, should I say, from uh, Vienna originally. Okay, you see these monoskiers taking the gate poles on the chest as much as they can. A little wide there from Loesch. 2.10.04 is the time she needs to beat in terms of a single run. Anything inside 104, 103 would be good. Loesch really working hard in these last few gates and crosses the line in 2.05.05. It's a 103.39 run. So Loesch pushes Eda, her compatriot, into second. And now we have the two German ladies. Took a heavy hit to the face mask a moment ago. Anna Schafferhuber. 20505. Her run this morning, 59.66. She was exactly two seconds clear of uh, Schafferhuber. So it means she can come down in 105.3 something and she'll be fine. But she'll want to get as close as she can to Annalena Forster. Schaffelhuber. 
moving neatly through the course. 24-year-old into the final two gates, crossing the line. Oh, two minutes, 0.61. She's some 4.4 seconds clear of Claudia Loesch. So, uh, Annalena Forster, who was 2.3 seconds quicker than the rest of the field this morning. She has that as a buffer, which means that she's got a 102, in fact, early 103s if she is slow, and she'll still win the title for a second day running. You see she's the leader of the Slalom World Cup points so far. One race, one win. Can she make it two out of two? Looking good at the moment. Forster with no real issues so far on the course. I've said that before and people have fallen away. 22 years of age. Lives in Freiburg and does exactly as I just said she might. Once you say as a commentator, these guys look good, all of a something, all of a sudden something happens and Forster, well she has a couple of seconds to play with here. If she can pick up the speed again through this final section, that was right at the top of the final descent. Not sure if she's going to make it inside. No, second. What a valiant effort down that bottom stretch. 201.23. But just one mistake, getting caught up in that gate pole at the top of the hill. And there it is, just hooking on to the bit at the bottom that doesn't move anywhere else. And you're all right. But uh, Annalena Forster, 201.23, means that Schaffelhuber takes it in 2.61. Third position is Claudia Loesch and Heike Edda completes the two German, two Austrian finish line in fourth position. You see uh, how intrepid reporter Stephen Jameson there, bringing you all of the interviews and getting run over as well. Snow continues to come as uh, the two German athletes are in the interview zone, getting uh, a few final words from their guide and just getting ready. This is uh, Damir Mizdak of Croatia. There's his guide. That's Luca Davariak. The Croatian team start their second run. I think this is the first time they've done Two runs in a day. My memory serves me correctly. Damir is uh, fairly self-critical, and he and Luca work extremely hard, as obviously all the the pairs do, to try and improve the level of communication and ability to pick up the speed. This is a little bit quicker from Damir than a couple of his previous runs. So, uh, Maybe just about getting used to the conditions of the slope itself. You see again, Luca doesn't look behind as much as uh, some coaches you see. There's, there's the constant referral behind them from some coaches. There's a quick look from Luca as they come into this final quick section. So he's trusting that his instructions are good enough and Damir goes wide. You can just be able to make out that gate post and uh, Luca now will need to just start to move ahead of him again. But uh, Damir did well there to rescue that and stay on the course and get this finish. So he'll cross the line in a time of 2.14.49. Damir Mizdrak finishes his World Cup here in Austria 
the time of 2.14.49. Remember men's standing and sitting events to come as well. This is uh, Gunnar Morgenfurt. We were due to have uh, Sean Pianza is on my list, but uh, this is definitely Gunnar Morgenfurt. So he crosses the line. Yeah. Man making his international debut for Austria. Little nod of the head in appreciation for what he's achieved here this week. Welcome to the World Cup circuit for Gunnar Mürgenfurt. So uh, this is Ivan Hrantsev. Francev being led down by Denis Perevozchikov. And uh, Perevozchikov leads Francev through in a time of 148.73, so it's quickest. Uh, Francev and Perevozchikov finish their run. They are the current leaders for now. They'll stand in the leader box if they are directed that way they're not they've uh, made their way back out into the practice area now this is definitely Giacomo Bertagnoli so uh, no John Santacana Mestegui in this second run either Bertagnoli comes towards the end of his run this is quick from the Italian One forty three ninety one. So he leads here with just two more to come. So mistakes from the Kozubov or Marku. And the title could go to Bertagnoli, but uh, the Kozubov is uh, going well. Coming towards the line then, 144.86. It's actually 144.77 from uh, the Kozubov. So he is in second. Mac Marku now. Can he stop Valery Kozubov from taking this title? He went out in the first run of asylum yesterday. Looked very strong though this morning. And he and Jack Leach making their way down. This would be the second victory of the week. If they can get there, 143.49. And the official time comes through as 143.45 for Mac Marku. And Canada have victory in the VI event. Jack Leach guiding Mac Marku to his second victory of the week. This is Jeffrey Stutt. Dutchman was uh, visibly disappointed with his first run this morning. Uh, we'll be looking to put in a stronger performance. Born originally in uh, Hoon. Now in Enghusen. And uh, dips across the line. There's a, a celebration from Jeffrey Stutt. He'll have set himself a personal goal. And that's one that he's happy with. 152.35 his total time. 56.62 this morning. The, uh, the best of the men's standing times belong to Adam Hall, 51.07. So uh, Stutt 
started some uh, five seconds back, but that run of 55.73 seemed to please him. Martin Franz from Slovakia. Thirty-three-year-old into the final few gates, then and he just scampers towards the line. One fifty-three, fifty-one. It's not good enough to overtake Jeffrey Stuck. So uh, Martin France will stay where he is for now. James Whitley, another of our athletes, who uh, don't have the ability to use the ski pole in either hand. Whitley driving through the gate poles he's just using the forearm on his left and right to bat away what he can so he can get as close as he can and that's the skill that gets them down quicker good turning ability from Whitley he's outside as well 153.43 so despite starting with a slight advantage over Jeffrey Stutt Neither Martin France or James Whitley can pass him. Whitley is quicker than Martin France, though. So Stutt stays in the winner's box for now. This is Nico Priantic. So I had a couple of uh, tumbles on home snow this week here in Kutay. Use of only the pole in the left hand for Pizjantic. The uh, man with the green helmet moving through the course neatly. This is uh, one of the least troublesome runs he's had. And uh, Pizjantic into the final section. 152 should be achievable from here, and it is. 1.58 seconds in front, so uh, Pujancic is now the leader. So Pujancic takes to the front. Kirk Schornstein up next. 24-year-old, originally from Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. And that Sean Steen into the final section. This is the hard right to left, and people coping a little bit better now. A shake of the head from Sean Steen, though. 150 34. It's actually 150 28. So 150 28 for Kirk Sean Steen means that he is now our new leader. Braden Luscombe, fellow Canadian of Sean Steens. He's already into the final drop down. How will he cope with that intricate bottom se section? He's, uh, he's done all right, you know. One one hundredth of a second. In fact, it's two one hundredths in the end. So one fifty twenty six puts Braden Luscombe in front. His official time one fifty twenty six. Slightly slower on the run, but uh, the advantage he had from the first run keeps him in front of Kirk Schoenstein. This is Martin Wurtz now, and that is Martin Wurtz coming down the outside of the course. He's gone. Mitchell Gawley up next. The uh, heavy breathing verts should indeed be Mitchell Gourley, who is the uh, athlete representative for uh, Paris skiing. And they're just seeing a replay of the end for Martin Verts.
some athletes down at the bottom. That's uh, Mikhail Pjantic. That's a lady texting. You can see one of the Australian coaches wrapped up nice and warm. Slightly different conditions to back home, I'm sure. But, uh, watching on to see what happens for Mitchell Gawley in a minute. There's some of our athletes making their way back up. Luscombe and Sean Steen and Piantic all chatting away to each other at the bottom there. Luscombe, the leader. This is Mitchell Gawley. It says here he uh, lives in Melbourne. Well, he's senior international debut in 2006 in uh, Colorado in the United States. So, uh, Plenty of experience for Mitchell Gawley to call upon. Had that uh, gold in the Super Combined for the World Championships earlier this year. And he had a massive smile on his face as he crossed the line that day. He's been still in the leader box for long periods during this competition as well. And he's going to be now as well. That's a good run. That is a good run from Mitchell Gawley. 1.44.82 the official time, which means he's some 5.44 seconds clear of Braden Luscombe. This is uh, Santari Kivri of Finland. Will he be the flying fin here as he makes his way down? Oh, just a... A little sideways, a little sketchy from Kivari. 144 to beat. This will be tight. No, 145. Gawley, stay where you are. 145.35. So, uh, Kivari doesn't affect the top of the podium. At the moment, 0.53 down he was. This is James Stanton. Twenty-three-year-old. Now a resident of Denver, Colorado. Started competing in uh, 2011. Took inspiration from the 2010 Paralympic Winter Games. He's also going to be outside, 0.39. They're getting closer. That's actually uh, Thomas Field, should I say, number 50. Stanton's next up, number 60. Apologies. Here's Stanton, so Field doesn't affect the leaderboard either. So uh, this is 60, James Stanton. 144.75, new leader. Little roll of the shoulders and neck as he comes through the line. 144.74 is the official time. Which means he leads... By just 0 0.08 from Mitchell Corley. It's a good run from James Stanton. Aaron Lindstrom. The young Swede up next. Lindstrom has the ability to use the forearm on his left and the 
only hold a ski pole with his right hand. So Lindstrom moving down at a fair speed it's to 17. in uh, Stvalde in Sweden has he got 144.75 in him as he turns here it'll be on 142.3 he might you know he's in 0. 0. 0.6 0. 0.6 of a second six tenths quicker than James Stanton we have another new leader Ayabayev is next See some of the coaches looking on. This is uh, Alyabayev, who's made a start to his run. Went 51.95 earlier. Again, you see protective wear on the right forearm. So the ability to just move those gate posts. Out of the way without uh, hitting him in the face. Oh, and Alibayev just struggling towards the bottom end here. Has it cost him? Tight time. Would you believe his total time is 144.14. It's exactly the same as Aaron Lindstrom. The run was 52.19, which meant that he lost out on the advantage he had. 144.14. Out goes... Arthur Boschet. The young Frenchman. DNF's in his second run here. Let's take a look at the replay. Just getting caught up in the gates. Away goes the ski. And down goes Boschet. And now it's down to Adam Hall. Otherwise, we've got tied winners. 144-14 is what Adam Hall of New Zealand needs to get. 51-07 this morning means that he has a slight advantage. But only... Well, just short of three-tenths of a second. So any mistakes... Could be drastic for Adam Hall. The New Zealander edging towards the end of his run. 144.14 into the final few turns. I think he's got it as he comes in. 143, he's done it. 0.94 of a difference for Adam Hall. And New Zealand will take the second slalom event here in Katai. The 30-year-old has uh, taken this title, barring anything miraculous from the final few runners. But uh, this is Alexis Grimont from Canada. Grimond just manoeuvring himself into the final few gates and he'll cross in 156.68, the official time. So uh, this is Jasper Balkan. Belgium just getting a little off balance through that section. And uh, the 25-year-old continues to work hard through the gates 
Oh, and then just slipping from under. Now, if he gets up, he's still in the course. If he wants to carry on, Balkan getting himself back on track. So he's still within the gates. Nope, deciding not to. Well, you just see it here in the replay. Just one of those innocuous things that happens even when you're out just leisurely going down a slope on holiday, whatever. Just all of a sudden you lose the skis from underneath you. And that was one of those moments for Jasper Balkan. Wasn't even particularly at the maximum speed either. This is uh, Berhuta Goeki. Goeki looking pretty quick here. Can he uh, combine that with a good time to end his four day spell here in Kutai? Slalom has been his event here. He's uh, moving quickly, but he's just faltered a little bit as he came towards the brow of the last hill and uh, just seemed to lose a little bit of a, the speed. Here's the final three gates for Koiki on 56.08 is his combined time. 57.31 is the run time in total for Koeki. This is uh, Julian Ernst of Austria. 34 years of age. The man with the blue helmet on here starts to make his way down for his final piece of action. Our final piece of action will be the men's sitting event, of course. Can Jesper Pedersen fight back in that one. This is Ernst crossing in 13.71. 156.91. That's the 12th fastest run down of the second run by anybody so far. So not bad from Ernst. Hilmar Urvassun. Seventeen years old. He's actually uh, played golf at national level in his home country. A uh, uh, left leg amputation in 2009 for Ulvarsson. Here he is competing at the World Cup in Kutai. 159.79. So, uh, Andreas Kurtz is next. That's him just there, number 74. Kurtz moving in and out nicely. The time this morning was a one. Minute 87, 60, 87. Lucas just managing to survive a worrying moment there. Adam Hall will be standing in the winner's area, probably being interviewed, ready for the highlights and social media packages that are put together by the great team at the, the IPC. The Paralpine skiing being given as much coverage as ever this time around. Kohei Takahashi. He went uh, 10130 this morning. And he goes 10241 here. So he's uh, slower than Kurtz, Ovasen, Ernst, and uh, Goeki. Uh, 
As onto the course comes uh, Davide Bendotti. Bendotti went 102.27 this morning. 23-year-old into the final stages. Crossing in 203.40. Puts him in 19th place for now. Sergei Alexandrov. Penultimate athlete to go. Alexandrov went uh, 10920 this morning. And last will be Matt Short of Great Britain. Uh, Alexandrov into the final section. Four more. Gates to come, here's the hard right and to the left, and oh, he's just about made it round. And will come across the line in 2.17.11. Little disappointed with himself in the latter stages of that. There's a, a little smile. And uh, Alexandrov, 2.17.11 is the official time. Well, we should have had Matt Short of Great Britain. Uh, but that's our first sitting skier getting ready to go. So uh, I'll wait for the information to see if Matt Short... Well, maybe he's on that bus because that's the British ski and snowboard bus. So maybe that's where Matt Short is. But uh, I'm not so sure he's on the course. So that is the end of the round. So uh, Adam Hall takes the title on the final day with the men's standing event. Thirteen men to take part in the sitting event here. This is Enrique Plante of Argentina. Oh, big slide there, but Plante has kept it within the course, so... He can keep on going and trying to register a second run time. Thirty-five year old lives in uh, Buenos Aires. Is got a face full of snow there. Went into the softer stuff just out the normal racing line. a government official back at home. And uh, Plante keeps on moving. Competed in Sochi, came 19th in the giant slalom event there. Got a 15th place finish in the World Championships in the slalom in Italy earlier this year as well. So uh, Plante driving in to those final few gates and uh, Plante crossing the line in 2.18.42. Now this is uh, Murat Pelic who uh, was uh, using his wheelchair a little bit earlier on and uh, sliding around on the wet floors inside the hotel restaurant area. So uh, when he's not sliding around on his mono ski, he's pretty much sliding around somewhere. He's uh, Murat Peli. He's just driving hard into a little bit wider than perhaps some people have gone because he was kicking up fresh powder, but uh, Pelli 10 seconds clear of Enrique Planti, so he's the K1 
current leader for now. Floris Mayer will be next. This is he. 28 year old from Surest. Just got to keep it on course. He's a keen freestyle skier up until an accident in 2012, and here he is competing on the World Cup circuit, and I'm sure hoping to go to Pyeongchang as well. Got a 10th place finish in the Super G at the World Championships. He's going to go through these final couple of gates here in Khutai, and uh, he's in the lead, 204.15. So uh, he's quicker than Murat Pele. Is Floris Meyer, and the first three have got through without any difficulty. Kurt Oakway on the course now. So, uh, Kurt Oakway crosses in 159.06, so he's now our leader. So, uh, Akira Keno of Japan. Only eight more to come after Keno, and... Uh, Give or take that uh, you very often get a couple of DNFs. Oh, he's hoping not to be one himself. Uh, what I was going to say was uh, if he can get himself into first position here and then you sort of watch on and see how the others fare. But uh, Keno has not had the smoothest of runs down here. Will he make the 159? He will just. 157.49. So uh, Akira Keno is top. Marcus Frachterhofer of Austria will be up next. Tyler Walker was fastest this morning, but uh, found himself disqualified for missing a couple of gates. As innocuous as that can be. He had a bit of a patchy spell on the mountain and probably didn't even notice he'd missed them. To begin with, oh, and Gratterhofer becomes our first DNF, sliding off the course and out of view. Gratterhofer just here just goes from underneath him not a great deal he could do about that but he is gone so uh, Akira Kano as I said you get yourself into first at some point you just gotta hope and pray now here's a man that won both of the giant slaloms and won yesterday's slalom and this morning made uncharacteristic mistakes can he do what Marie Brochet did a little bit earlier on and take a fourth victory of the week he is going to have to work ever so hard he was over three and a half seconds back from Johan Tebole but he has been that good this week it would be hard to discount him still he's flying it there's nothing to lose I suppose after a bad first run you may as well go for it on the second I have those World Cup points in mind, but he's absolutely driving himself through these gates, and he'll cross the line. 150, 54, 6.95 seconds clear of Akira Kano. So Pedersen is now the leader. Bjorn Benke was, uh, was only a matter of eight one hundredths quicker than Pedersen this morning. He's got to do it again here. But that is a fantastic run from Jesper Pedersen. And the challenge really is on for the rest of the field now. So, uh,
Just oh no, and that's him gone as well, is it? Well, he'll continue the run. I'm not convinced he was the right side of a couple of those gate posts, but uh, Drenke will carry on for now and register a time and we'll uh, worry about whether he was the right side in the review or not afterwards. But uh, Brenke will continue to come down, chasing that time of Pedersen that's already gone. So uh, Jesper Pedersen has seen one of them off. I think his time, 157.73. He finds himself in third as it stands. Frederick Francois is next. And there is the problem for Henke. I'm not sure his ski doesn't go over that gate rather than round it. But uh, this is Francois, number 91 for France. All the Fs. She comes slaloming through to the final section. He's going to be outside of Pedersen's time as well, but it's good enough for second. Francois is on the podium as it stands. Four to come, including the world champion. Edison, that's more of a nervous smile than he's had in the last few days. Normally he's uh, got into that leader's box and he's felt comfortable in the knowledge that he's probably going to win. Today, he has to go through the turmoil of will I or won't I? 37-year-old Taiki Mori now. Clattering into the gates as he goes. Silver medal winner. At the last three Winter Paralympic Games, he's not going to make 150.54, is he? Oh, one tenth of a second. Oh, Taiki Mori, so, so close. But this is the gamble that Jesper Pedersen had to make. He's gone as quick as he could, knowing that some of these athletes have got three or four seconds on him. World champion, Jürgen Kamsler. Eighteen years of age. It was the first run he completed this morning of the competition over the first few days. This is more like what we saw in Italy. And Kamsler will cross the line in front. Slams his arms together. 149.69. The Dutchman, who won the slalom, giant slalom and super combined events in Italy earlier in the year. As well as winning the Super G World Cup final event. He's top. Now, Dino Sokolovic, wife Barbara, will be watching on, I'm sure. Dino has been in great spirits all week just keep saying to me I'm, I'll do my best whatever that is is what it is Sokolovic this is good looking for 149 he's top Sokolovic of Croatia with one to come in Johan Tabele oh he's enjoyed that I'm sure his wife Barbara he's screaming at her laptop or device whichever way she's watching it only this man can stop the Croatian from taking the very last race before we go to Croatia. There'd be a certain sense of symmetry to that, wouldn't there? Tabele. He had over four tenths of a second advantage, so he's got a little mistake he can make. As long as he's somewhere between 53.80, he'll be fine. But this is quick again from Tabule. He's out. Johan Tabule goes. 
and you can only imagine what's going through his head there. You can see him just staring at the sky. A huge chance for Johan Tabele. But there's your winner. And look, just look at the laid back demeanor of the man. He said to me in the breakfast area yesterday, hey, look, I'll do what I can do. And if it's good enough, it's good enough. And it's exactly what he needed. Tabale just couldn't get back inside. You can see straight away, so annoyed with himself. And he still sat there pondering. Sokolovic comes out. Damien Mislak, his fellow Croatian. Pedersen gets the handshakes as well. Jeroen Kamstert, one of the first to uh, congratulate him. So, well, Sokolovic was on the podium yesterday in third. He's got top spot this time around. We end our competition here in Austria with a Croatian winner. And in a matter of two weeks or so, that is exactly the country will be in for the next round of the World Para Alpine Skiing World Cup. Sokolovic takes it from Kamstra. Jesper Pedersen finds himself in third. Not something he's used to so far this week. But a great way to end our coverage of the Kutai edition of the World Para Alpine Skiing World Cup. From all of us here in Kutai, we'll see you when we get to Zagreb in January.